Thank you so much for that. Uh, and I think the last speech here really manifests the reason it's so important to have events as this one. Uh, and because technology is not enough, uh, you do really need to understand the science behind this, uh, how to learn. I'll try to be fairly short and practical, because you said another thing that was very interesting is, uh, you know, we should use what exists today before we consider what comes tomorrow. And the reality is that most of you here, I hope, uh, know a little bit about this, are maybe aware of AR and VR. You may even understand what AR and VR does. But you may not believe yet that this will do what it needs to do for you. And by having these conversations and by having this type of practical application, we can achieve also that. So I'll, I'll talk a little bit about practical things. You know, you know, to do all this, you have to actually create content that is valuable. And there's a lot of obstacle in technology. And that's what we focus. We focus on how can we create, uh, take data sets from various areas? How can we bring that assets to life? How can we publish this agnostically to everything? And that's where we put our efforts and our investment to develop a platform that can do all those things and can do it, uh, I would say, in three characteristics. One that's easy. For people that don't understand technology, where you can bring in more than 730,000 assets, how can someone that only knows PowerPoint uh, be able to use this type of uh, technology and create their own content, teachers themselves? And how can sell service? And how can you publish this agnostically to everything, to any device, uh, existing devices and, and future devices? Uh, so that's a little bit what we are looking at, and, um, and uh, I think we're doing good, good uh, progress there. But it's not enough. We also have to have library. What I hear when I visited, we have about 450 universities working with us today, and the number one thing they say is content, right? Where's the content? And uh, I'm pleased to share that we have developed a lot of content. We have a vault with content developed for 20 years, uh, more than 730,000 assets. And because we have centers in 40 locations in the world, they are, every day I wake up, there's more and more certified, good quality content that we develop with our educational partners. Uh, we also try to package this to make it practical so people can come on Thursday, go through the lessons, and start adopting on Monday. Um, here is a very important uh, point. Uh, we design a VR Innovation Academy, and this academy is actually teaching Teachers are secrets. So they, we have a four-hour course where you can actually come in, get familiar with technology, and actually be able to use the libraries on Monday, certified libraries. Or we have an eight-hour course where a teacher comes in maybe with their PowerPoints that they normally have used for the last 10 years. And come Monday, they can actually do this in virtual reality. And we also have in-depth courses where we build the new talent, the new experts. This is one hour, four months to one year both uh, theoretical but also uh, practical, project-based learning. And of course, we do want to encapsulate one of the key aspects of our relation uh, with NTU is the research aspect. How do we encapsulate this knowledge? Uh, and how can we disseminate it widely to many people? And eventually, in Singapore and other locations, how do we nationally roll this out to everybody? Because this is a democratic process like uh, uh, the, the ambassador pointing out the equality aspect. I come from Sweden. I, I got my education for free. I want this to be, uh, to be spread. And we believe knowledge is a human right. Um, OK, so to do, to walk the talk, in addition to the collaboration that we have with NTU and many others, we also have set up a nonprofit organization we call Beyond Education. And we had the honor to hear our chairman, uh, Professor Bethel Anderson, talk about this. And we try to pull together a diverse type of competence, people from OECD and from around the world, to advise us on the direction of this development. We also have spent the last 15 years in developing countries uh, under our Eon Learn for Line program, where we set up centers in places like uh, Vietnam. Uh, this center is in South Africa, city of Um now we are expanding in many other locations. And I think this is very, very important uh, for the development, because these countries, this location, can actually leapfrog from where they are today uh, to where they need to be tomorrow. 
Uh, we also look at equality in all dimensions. And this is an example from our center in uh, Saudi Arabia. And then we, there we decided to only allow ladies to train uh, and become experts in virtual reality. Uh, and now they, these ladies are fantastic and now leading uh, the security and development uh, for application in uh, Saudi Arabia for Aramco and others. We also want to create bridges between nations. So one issue, one big barrier in our communication is language. So we teamed up with a leading language learning company in Brazil and have rolled out to 50,000 students, including poor students in favelas, uh, how to learn language visually. So we use virtual reality and augmented reality for that purpose. Um, so. So that's kind of giving you a little bit of a perspective. I would like to end with a prediction of future. <laughs> so uh, and this is a very dangerous exercise, I must say, because uh, one thing will be sure, whatever I say, it will be wrong. OK? So just, but um, so first of all, I think we, this is, you know, I, I believe that everybody, when they lived, whether it was in the age of this steam engine or the discovery of the computer, believed that they live in a very critical, very special time. And so do we, right? If you wake up every morning, something new happens and it goes very fast. But actually, I think objectively, we are in a very special time. It's a time that humanity has not experienced before. Most people, scientists believe that in the next 30 to 50 years, we will reach general artificial intelligence. And for those that don't know the term, is when artificial intelligence become as good as us and a little bit better. And if you think a little bit about this, and many intelligent people have, that's a big, big change for humanity. Um, so every day I read in the newspaper how artificial intelligence can kill more jobs. And a lot of people actually focusing how first we can be better than humans in chess, then we can be in Go, then we can be in many other things, right? How, how we can recognize uh, animals better as a computer versus a human. And I think we have a choice as humanity. It's not given where we end up. <laughs> we can very well end up in a society like Ready Player One. How many have seen that movie? OK, so for those that haven't seen the movie, a society where machines essentially do most jobs, uh, the social structure has broken down. People are spending 8 to 10 hours a day in virtual reality to be pacified or taking happy pills. And the wealth is concentrated to a very, very few percentage of humanity. So if you let capitalism run its course and you don't do human decisions, that could be a scenario. Personally, I don't believe in it. I believe that we are curious. I believe that we want to explore. I believe, unfortunately, humans are greedy, which in this case works well for us, uh, because greed is, I wouldn't say like Gecko, that greed is good. I don't think greed is good, but greed works in the aspiration uh, of uh, you know, uh, protecting your family, increasing the wealth. So what am I going with this? I believe we have to focus artificial intelligence in areas that help us, not eliminate us. OK? So I think that should be a task for many. It's not only Elon Musk that says this. I, I, most intelligent people I've been talking that I've thought about this have come to the same conclusion. And I'll, I'll, I'll finish in about a minute. But so what, how do we do that? We create a bridge. Uh, ultimately, many people that the bridge is a seamless integration, so basically between our brain and the computers. Uh, neural lace, and some people put $100 million towards that, so it cannot be just smoke. But I also believe I'm conservative. I think that's going to take 30 to 50 years. So what can we do today? I think augmented and virtual reality is that bridge, at least for the next foreseeable future, 10 to 20 years. And I think if you, even as a capitalist, you're very, very focused on money, putting a man and machine together is far more profitable than doing one or the other. Because machines are not very good at picking things. If I put a piece of chewing gum on this table now and ask the machine to find it, it's going to take some time. A human can find it like this. So that's, we need to find the marriage. Okay? So the vision I have is of the future is that technology will pamper us. 
will be cradled. I walk with artificial intelligence on my right shoulder. On my left shoulder, I have big data. It knows who I am, what I like. It protects me. It makes sure that I'm productive. And we'll see how that goes. But I very much look forward and I'm excited about that future. Thank you so much.